All right, so sometimes we just need to factor a quadratic trinomial slowly. It takes a little practice, a little time for us to understand what exactly we're doing, or we have a test coming up and we're extremely stressed out and frustrated, and we just need something to fall back on. We, we can't do too much mental math or try to remember everything. So in this video, what I want to do is show you kind of a slow method that you can use to be able to factor any quadratic trinomial. Um, so the first thing we want to do when we want to factor this is we want to go ahead and multiply the coefficient of our x squared times our constant. So we have 17 times 12. Now, again, you could do this mentally in your head, or let's just break it up like we're, you know, good back in the old days. And we're just going to do a one digit times a two digit number. So again, just to multiply this, seven times two is going to be a 14. Seven times one um, is going to be a seven plus one is going to be an eight. So it equals an 84. Now, again, if you have a calculator, feel free to use one, or if you're good at mental math, go ahead and do it. But uh, what I want to do is just focus on the slow approach to make sure that we're going to be doing this correctly. Now, the one thing I want you to recognize here is that my last term was positive. So what we're going to do is we're going to find all the factors of 84, all of them. But what we're going to do is eventually we're going to look for the sum of those factors that's going to add to a 31. So even though once I start listing out the factors, you might recognize that. And if you're taking a task or doing your homework, you would just stop right there. But what I want to do is just kind of show you my method of how to identify all the factors and then go ahead and analyze. So the first thing I always like to do is I, I irregardless of this last number or the product being positive or negative, I always just list it as a positive 84. And then we'll go with the positives or negative signs in a second. I'll explain what to do there. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to list out all the factors. So I'm always going to start with one and write it as one times 84 obviously equals 84. Then we just start going down the list. Like let's do the next number two. Just two divided into 84. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, divide two into there. That's going to give you a 42. Then we're going to go ahead and take a look at a three. Now, sometimes a three might not be obvious, right? Or maybe another number you're like, ah, I have no idea how to do that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, remember you, your teacher at one time taught you long division? Like go back and use those tools. So three divides into eight and 84. So how do you do long division? Well, three goes into eight. How many times? Two times. Two times three is going to be a six. And then we're going to subtract our um, columns. Eight minus six is going to be a two. We kind of have a place value here. So that's going to bring down to four. Three goes into 24 and eight times. And you're like, oh yeah, I knew that answer. Well, yeah, there you go. It's okay. So therefore, that's going to be a 28. We don't need to be doing mental math here. We can fall back on some of these old skills that we learned. Now, the cool thing is you could do that with the rest of the numbers, but like four, like when I take two and I double it to give it four, all I simply need to do is then divide my 42 by two, right? So it's going to be a 21 because all you're doing is, you know, when you divide by two and divided by four is dividing by two, divided by two, right? So therefore you can see, I'm just taking 42, I'm going to half that and that's going to give me a 21. Now, obviously, I know my last, my number ends in a four. I know it's not going to be divisible by five, right? Because only numbers divisible by five or zero, or only numbers that end in five or zero are going to be divisible by five. So I'm going to forget that. I'm going to go to six here and say, oh, well, if three times 18 is 28, if I double the three to get six, then I need to half this um, to give me that factor, which is going to be a 14. Again, I'm kind of using the same approach I did with the two and the four. Right, so if you multiply by two, then you divide by two over there. Um, and then last but not least here is we have the seven and seven might not be obvious to some people, but one thing you can think about is you could say, well, I know that seven times 10 is 70, right? And that's gonna leave me with what? A remainder of 14. Does seven divide into 14? Yeah, how many times? Two times, right? So you could say, oh, okay, well, seven times two is going to be a 12. Um, again, you could do long division if you want to, or you could do a little bit of mental math in that case. So, all right, these are all the factors of 84. All right. Um, now what we want to do is look at our middle term. So our last term was positive. So what that tells us is our two factors are either going to be both positive or both negative. However, since our middle term is positive, what that tells us is our two factors have to be positive, right? If you're going to, because that's what your two factors are going to add to. So now what we want to do is look at our factors and say, all right, if we add our two factors, right, they're both positive. Which of these are going to give us a positive 31? And you can say, ding, ding, ding. Right there, it's going to be the factor. This one, 3 plus 28, is obviously going to give us a 31, right? This is, gives us a 44. Uh, this gives you 85. This gives 25. This gives you a 20. And this gives you a 19. Okay, I'm not going to ram down. That's kind of a little bit of waste of time. All right, so now what do we do with this information? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the 12x. And rather than rewrite this as a 31, I am now going to take the factors that I just found, the three and the 28, and I'm going to write them 
right here. So I'm gonna say plus a 3x plus a 28x, and then let's go back to the dark blue, plus a seven, right? Now again, what I want you to recognize here is I really didn't change the problem. All I did is I broke up our number 31x into 3x plus 28x, right? Because these are like terms, you could combine them to give you a 31x. And in reality, what happens when you multiply binomial times binomial, remember you have those two terms that are like terms, you combine them, that's your middle term that's happening. But what we need to do is we need to take this expression and rewrite it as a product. So to do that, we're gonna do what we call the grouping method. So I'm gonna group my first two terms and I'm gonna group my last two terms. Now, all we're simply gonna do is look for the GCF, the greatest common factor. What is the largest number and variable that evenly divides into both of our terms for each binomial? So you look in here and you say, all right, three divides into 12 and three divides into three, right? So I got that. And then you could say, I can divide one X into both these as well. So therefore that's going to be a three X. Now left over inside my parentheses is going to be a four X plus one. Now here's the little trick that I want you to pay attention to. If this is a factorial, factorable um, binomial, or sorry, trinomial, and you're doing it correctly, then whatever is inside of this parenthesis has to be inside that parenthesis. So if it's not, then it's either you did something wrong, you made a mistake, or it's non-factorable. But that's a great way for you to be able to check that, okay? So let's go ahead and see what we get in this one. What can we factor out? And again, ideally, we're looking for 4x plus 1 to be the answer, right? So here you can say, well, the only thing that I can factor out of this is a 7. Can I factor, can I divide out a 7 out of 28x? The answer is yes. So you factor out a 7. All right, now what's going to be left over? So seven divides on 28, that is going to be a four X. How many times does seven divide in seven? That's gonna be a positive one. All right, now here's usually typically where students have trouble with this. So if you don't like this method or it's still a little confusing, I'll show you a little bonus method right at the end. So what I want you to recognize here is now we still have expressions and that is separated by an addition symbol. So what we can do is just like we factor out the GCF of these binomials, we can factor out the GCF here. And what I want you to recognize is both of these expressions have a shared term of 4x plus one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna factor out the 4x plus one. So I have a 4x plus one over here. And then we say, well, what's left over? If you factor out the 4x plus one or divide out the 4x plus one, what is gonna be left over? And that's gonna be what's in the, left bl in the light blue. That's gonna be a 3x plus a seven. Now we have gone ahead and factored this out. And again, remember, you can always check back your work. Like even, even if you're taking a test and you're like, oh crap, you know, I, like I gotta check my work. I don't wanna make mistakes. Do a quick little mental check. Like just multiply everything back out to make sure that you did it correctly. 4X times 3X is a 12X squared. 4X times seven is going to be a 28X. Three times one is going to be a 3X. And one times seven is going to be a positive seven. So therefore that's a 12X squared plus a 31X plus seven. And voila, that's exactly the answer we're looking for. Now, let's say you don't like this method. What else could you do? Well, there's another method, which is kind of a, a little method that I learned when I was a teacher. Um, I never did it when I was in college or in high school. Um, so it must've been something that was kind of newer. And it kind of goes into a little bit of the teaching of the understanding that multiplication provides the area. So if you want to factor, basically what happens is you're given the area, which factoring is basically just finding the sides of a rectangle. So you take your two terms, your quadratic, 12x squared and a positive seven, and then your two factors that you found, this three and the 28, remember those are gonna be your middle terms. So what you're gonna do here is you're going to add them. Rather than adding them in this way, which we call the grouping method, in this case, you can add them here, which we call the box method. So you can say, all right, that's gonna be a positive three x, and therefore this is going to be a 28x. Now, the only caveat on this one, and the, really the main thing you need to understand is now you're just gonna find the side lengths of the box that's gonna multiply to give you the area, which is on the inside. So the only problem that students usually come up in this case is if they do something like this. You say, oh, a three X and a four X, right? But the problem is we wanna make sure that we are selecting sides that are gonna give us integers for us. So like four X times what gives you a three X? Uh, I don't really wanna do that, right? Three X times what gives you 28? that's not gonna work with integers. So what we wanna do then is just be aware of that. And we wanna make sure that if it doesn't work on that one side, then just swap it. Say, all right, well, what about if I put a three X here and a four X there? Now you can say three X times four X is a 12 X squared. Three X times what gives you a three X? Well, that's gonna be a positive one. Four X times what gives you a 28 X? That's gonna be a positive seven. 
Now you have just figured out your two factors. So that's going to be a 3x plus 7 times a 4x plus 1. So that is your step-by-step -step slow method to be able to factor a quadratic of any type of quadratic. But if you want to be able to do something quicker, then go ahead and check out the next video that I have for you here. Or if you want more examples of me just factoring quadratics, then check out the videos I have for you down below. Cheers.